Hey, U.S. History, Mr. Maureen here, coming at you with a little bit longer of a video today. And so I just want to begin up top by saying this video has the features inside YouTube to speed me up or slow me down, use those settings accordingly, pause the video when you need to. I will not typically lecture this long in a video. This is a really key concept and otherwise a very interactive lecture that I would do in class that would take up a full class period. I'm gonna make it a little bit shorter today. So I want you to pause the video when I prompt you to and when I ask you to write down notes and consider different ideas. Um, I've listened back to the video on 1.25 speed, so it won't make me sound like Alvin and the Chipmunks, and it won't hurt my feelings if you want to try and speed me up and get through this a little bit more quickly. Just make sure that you have your notes going. I'm going to close out the video of me since I'll be looking at a different screen the whole time, and then you can just listen to my voice and follow along with the visuals on the computer. So we're inside the day two folder, just to orient us to your options for work today. You have either chosen to start with the um, uh, essential question baseline writing task. Totally fine if you put that off and wanted to do this first, it's really up to you. This assignment here is the artifact that you will post after you do this lecture and slideshow. It will only make more sense once you've finished. This is where you will post that assignment. So two assignments between now and when I see you next, that being the uh, baseline writing assignment, two to three paragraphs here, and the um, AMN artifact and caption that will be explained in this slideshow. Our concept attainment lecture notes worksheet is this resource that we are going to use. I ask that you have this open right now. Go ahead and pause the video. I paused my video too to just practice that that works. Um, you can fill this out as a Word doc as we go along. Some of you might have a printer at home. Others of you might want to just throw this into your uh, notebooks. Completely up to you. I don't really have a preference. But this T-chart for our concept attainment lecture and the few questions that correspond with it are going to be an important resource to have as we go throughout the slideshow. So without any further ado, I want to get into our concept attainment lecture today. Concept attainment, if any of you have ever done it before, is about uh, investigative detective work. You are going to get different smaller pieces, examples of a larger, bigger idea or concept. So. In our, in our exercise today, you're going to practice what's known as inductive reasoning. Think about for a moment if you know what inductive reasoning means. You're going to get yes examples that help you to define or describe some larger idea or concept that's at the center of the work we've been doing in our race and power unit these first three weeks. You'll also encounter no or non examples. They don't support or fit into the larger concept we're building, though you might start to notice that they themselves have something in common. Most of us are very familiar with deductive reasoning in school and in Western thinking. This is the scientific method. This is uh, writing an essay. This is not unlike the writing for those of you who have already done the baseline right. You start with a hypothesis. You incorporate evidence to support some larger reasoning that you confirm and tie everything together. In contrast, and we'll, we'll take a couple small, simple examples to practice where you will try to take examples and observe them and form a pattern and then create a hypothesis for how they might all be stitched together. And yes, we are in a challenging course, and this is going to ask you to wrinkle your brain and think. So just remember that this is difficult. This is part of the reason that I'm making this into a video that you can return to because it might be a concept and a way of thinking that will continue to bear fruit. Ah, no pun intended. Our first simple practice of concept attainment. We see some yes examples and some no examples. What is the concept? No, it's not green things that grow in nature. It is, in fact, vegetables. Here's a little bit more complex one. 
go ahead and pause The yes examples, hopefully you realized, are showing a bisecting line or symmetry or mirror images, unlike the no examples, which do not convey that concept. So we are going to recognize that our concept lies at the heart of our race and power unit and this question of what does it mean to be an American and who gets to decide. I'm so interested to read what has stuck with you these first few weeks and what evidences you're bringing in to consider how this question might have been answered at the start of our country's history. The characteristic of individualism, individualism in an American context is about the attributes and success of the individual, that progress, technological, political, social, at the core of that movement is the success of the individual, the expansion or the manifest destiny, which is a fancy phrase for the God intervention and the, the destined or God blessed um, outlook that many Americans had in the development of our country, the California gold rush and the success stories uh, therein, the, any individual could uh, pull himself up by his bootstraps and get out there and start panning for gold. So um, we see this in this famous John Gast painting, rec a reflective of the individual spirit of the uh, American historical narrative. We see the stringing of the telegraph wire, the train moving out west, the sunrise coming over the Rockies as farming, as as stagecoaches, as, as the train, as technology, as civilization moves out west, as it displaces the indigenous, as it displaces and eradicates the buffalo. Individualism is a yes example that you will note. Individualism in that T chart for you is a yes example of the larger concept that we're building today. Religious tolerance. Religious tolerance or acceptance of multiple religions. Which religions are practiced in our country that are considered to be American? Well, this depends on when you ask this question across our history. Were there times when Jewish Americans were not considered American? Have there been times when Buddhists were not looked at as included in uh, an American culture and a set of beliefs. Hindus, Muslims. As an interesting side note, this picture was taken in Washington, DC and is, is my bus stop right there behind this woman. I did not take this photo, but. And I imagine some of you are saying, well, Mr. Maureen, I know the First Amendment guarantees that Congress shall not make any law prohibiting or promoting one religion over another. And yet we could note that all of these practices, these different cultural traditions have at various points and maybe still are not considered quote unquote American. I pulled this picture from Instagram of a Sikh American gentleman trying to make light of uh, what has been undoubtedly his experience post 9-11, thanks to TSA and being targeted at uh, the airport. So religious tolerance will go in our no column in the T-chart. Religious tolerance is a non-example of the larger concept that we are building. Meritocracy. Meritocracy, for those of you who had the ninth grade class with me or spent some time with Strayer, you've undoubtedly uh, encountered this word before, but the concept of meritocracy is that it is a system of rule or a system of expectations that is based on individual success or the merits of someone's accomplishments. So this idea that equal opportunity for all who want to work hard, you get often the concept of social Darwinism, which is applying somewhat bastardizing the concept of evolutionary theory and applying it through a political science uh, framework like we see here with the lion, the ferocious lion guarding all of his money and the mouse with just barely a coin. Social Darwinism, as we'll explore, was really used as a concept in 
uh, the 1880s and 90s to kind of justify why the super rich were destined to be super rich and why the poor stayed poor. You'll often hear pull yourself up by your own bootstraps that corresponds nicely with individualism and the successes of an individual that will allow them the opportunity to succeed in our cultural context. As it says here, it goes with an individualist mindset. There we are pulling up those bootstraps. Um, traits of individualistic or meritocratic cultures are self-sufficiency, relying on oneself, the ability to come across as unique and hip, autonomy, being independent and not tied down to other people's telling you what you're going to do and what goes with that independent thought and action. So if you haven't guessed it already, um, merit, uh, meritocracy is an example of uh, what we, the larger concept that we're talking about today. So it is a yes example and goes along with individualism. Collectivism. Collectivism, uh, as we'll explore through concepts like unions and collective bargaining and concepts like the social gospel that inspired a lot of people to become more active around issues of poverty, as well as issues of, of prohibition and voting rights. Um, we see very famously this example from popular culture, Spock saying the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. This presentation of a utilitarian individual self-sacrifice for the greater good, that is uh, an example of collectivism. Go ahead and pause the video here and take a look at some of the contrasting characteristics of individualism versus collectivism. So invariably, uh, putting those in contrast with one another, you have guessed that individualism and collectivism are opposites. So collectivism is a non-example of this larger concept that we're building today. Socialism. Socialism is a political and economic theory of social organization. The means of production and distribution and exchange should be owned and regulated by a community as a whole. We see this concept played out in social democracies like Sweden and Denmark and Norway, where you have the state or the government management of things like college education or health care. Um, often uh, socialism is, is likened to uh, communism and the, the father and the theorist of communism here, Karl Marx would say that socialism is, is really like the, the stepping stone from capitalism to communism. Here are some interesting stats to consider um, when we often in an American context hear that socialism is, is, is often used in a derisive way or as like a four letter word. Um, but just to consider what some of the more socialist uh, democracy countries in the world, Norway, Finland, Iceland, all the uh, all five of the Scandinavian countries are sort of at the top of these uh, welfare state um, metrics here. So pause the video here and take a look and, and see what you can contrast from the top countries to the bottom countries. So I think it's interesting to, to consider that one of the metrics is involvement of women in higher office and the political status therein, the opportunities for state-funded education, what the gross national income, what an individual person's income is in the top 10 versus the bottom 10 country, things like children's well-being and health, ma mother's maternal health. <clears throat> so. We see how some of those socialist, uh, uh, social democracy uh, states um, fund with higher tax dollars, of course, systems like this. We can see that the U.S. ranks 33rd on this list out of the 190 or so countries. Socialism is a non-example. Socialism does not belong in the larger concept that we are building today. So socialism goes in your no column. Capitalism, by contrast is a yes example. Capitalism is the economic and political system in which a country's trade and industry are not controlled by the state, but are in fact controlled by private owners for profit. Um, 
Capitalism prioritizes a deregulated or hands-off laissez-faire approach and believes that industry knows best and that the invisible hand of the market will bring the best product to light, will allow the best and most effective and efficient companies to thrive and see the most success in the creation of a middle class. This has undoubtedly been the um, major contribution of the United States across the 20th and the start of the 21st century. So capitalism is a yes example of this larger concept we're building. So take a moment to pause the video and consider what do capitalism, individualism, meritocracy, what do they have in common? What, how might I stitch those together and call them some larger theme? Assimilation or Americanization. We see Uncle Sam here replacing the, uh, the hats of the, the cultural garb of these immigrants coming in, giving them his same hat, same top hat with the little mini American flag. The concept of Americanization of immigrants concept of Americanization of immigrants is like um, children were not just supposed to be in public school and educated, but also to become American. Belief in the education system was that immigrant children would give up cultural traditions, adopt American customs, language, practices, and that, um, that there was a norm to uh, achieve and live up to. This corresponds with the concept of the American melting pot, that we have a dash of Latino and Christian and European and Arab and Asian and Muslim and Jewish and African into the melting pot where everybody would be one giant stew together, not discernible, uh, but, but unique parts making up the whole tapestry of the American culture. Americanization is a yes example. Go ahead and add that to your notes. Racial justice. Racial justice. Here we have uh, some chain gang, all African-American workers. This is after the Civil War. We'll talk a lot about how convict leasing and programs like that created a new system of slavery in the South that was again state condoned and criminalized much of Black movement. We have lynchings. These are um, extrajudicial or outside the legal system where individuals were held accountable and killed for actions based upon mob violence. And seeing this graphic image, it's hard to imagine that people are hanging around and smiling with their sweethearts and looking on at what, uh, what they'd accomplished. We'll spend a lot of time later on looking at uh, marches in um, the civil rights era of the 1950s and 60s. Trayvon Martin, Michael Brown. You were all pretty young when Trayvon Martin was killed, but um, it's important to note that both of these two boys' murders were the inciting events of the kickstart of Black Lives Matter. And Trayvon Martin was your age, was a junior in high school, and was killed on his way home from a corner store where he got a bag of Skittles and an Arizona tea and a uh, angry neighborhood watchman who thought that this young man did not belong in his neighborhood and was not supposed to be there, assaulted and killed him. and the movement of Black Lives Matter was born out of those two tragedies. Flando Castile, racial justice is a non-example and goes in the no column. So review that, that list, that graphic organizer, and see what characteristics, how might you be able to stitch this together? What would we call if we grouped the yes examples together, practicing that inductive reasoning? What would we call it? 
Eldor, the American founding ideals. We've gone through these. You're getting more familiar with equality, liberty, democracy, opportunity rights, this concept of American exceptionalism, the legal framework that we've put together, this country that we've created. What does it mean to be an American and who gets to decide, who has decided, who will decide? Eldor is a yes example. Diversity and leadership. We've got some different uh, examples of leadership across American history. We'll talk a lot about suffragists and uh, empowering different groups to vote and who fought for their right to vote and enfranchisement. We have some of the early women leaders in the 1800s um, fighting for women's suffrage. We have Angela Davis here, a political activist that we'll talk a lot about um, once we get to the 1960s and 70s, the Black Panther movement and anti-racism. She's really the intellectual uh, founder of, of anti-racism. Gloria Steinem, a feminist activist. Marsha P. Johnson, a gay and trans activist who was, who was murdered. Elizabeth Warren, current senator. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, current representative. I should have included my picture that I took with her. I randomly met her on the street the last time I was in D.C. And Ilhan Omar, representative from Minnesota, current representative as well. Um, diversity and leadership is a non-example and does not go in the yes list. Uh, according to Forbes 500, as of 2017, there are zero black women CEOs in the U.S. top 500 companies. Whiteness, one of our last characteristics in this concept that we are building, that we are attaining, that we are organizing today. Non-Hispanic white people comprise 60% of the U.S. population in total. This was in 2010. There was a new census this year, so this number might change. If I were a betting man, I would guess this number has gone down. So that would be um, if 60% of the people are white, that would put, um, you know, 30% roughly men and women, uh, 15 to 20% then are adult white males. So 15 to 20% of our entire population are adult white males. Yet in positions of U.S. business leadership, Fortune 500 companies as of 2017, 80% of all, not CEOs, of all leadership in the Fortune 500 companies are men, and 72% of those leaders are white men. Of course, we all know that 44 of the 45 uh, US presidents have also been white men. Now, one thing I wanna point out about this graphic when I generated uh, these images for this slideshow, all of them were, notice the white man holding up the white finger pointing. I didn't search white for any of these terms. This is the image that came up with president, athlete, boss or leader, actor. So a default or a ubiquity of whiteness. Whiteness is a yes example. It is our last yes example. So consider your T-chart. You have manifest destiny or this concept of something being God-blessed. You have meritocracy and individualism. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps, a survival of the fittest. Capitalism, Americanization and assimilation, the Eldor values of American exceptionalism, and whiteness. Pause the video here and think, how might I categorize or what might I call all of these concepts these pieces together to form some larger concept. What ideas did you come up with? Many of the ideas that I've heard before are American dream or American culture or what we value in our society. Who's at the top? What matters. And all of these are right. We'll group them together, this idea of individualism and the role that it plays in social commitment, 
uh, capitalism and its economic function, uh, Eldor and its political uh, shaping of our country. What we'll refer to all of these characteristics as this water that we're all swimming in is the American master narrative. I know this is a concept that's probably not familiar to any of you and likely none of you guessed that that's what this was called today. But I want you to write that phrase down above the yes column, American master narrative. A master narrative in general is a dominant or prevailing reinforced political, social, cultural, economic principles and values that are idealized, are upheld in a particular culture. These include histories and myths and truths that often go unchallenged and perpetuate and maintain the illusion of a status quo, of a normal, of an expectation of the way that what is accepted and expected of people. So the characteristics that we have just explored are a part of the American master narrative. What are obvious or explicit examples that you can think of that endorse, support, perpetuate the American master narrative? That will be part of your homework over the weekend, um, which we'll explain in a moment. One thing that I want to be sure that you hear from me, is the American master narrative bad or wrong? No, I don't want you to leave listening to this and considering these characteristics with uh, a cynical mindset. I want you to understand that these are characteristics that are truths and values of the American experience and progress that have absolutely and will continue to be successful for some people, but not for everyone. So some have even been limiting and restrictive and harmful to other people who don't belong to those groups or those cultural values. So our purpose as young, creative, soon to be voting age Americans is to be critical thinkers and consider the component parts of the American master narrative. I want you to understand how these pillars and myths of history and culture have been constructed. Consider how we might complicate or challenge them. Angela Davis, the aforementioned uh, anti-racism scholar. She notes that our collective responsibility to work together, especially when facing the pain and uh, parts of our history that we might not uh, uh, want to promote or might be uh, feel shame towards, um, is that we face it honestly and embrace radical creativity. How can we think outside the box to challenge and live up to the ideals of a country that proposes equality for all. For example, we'll talk a lot about the tension across American history of uh, capitalism and communism and what the heck socialism is and where that fits into the mix. So is American capitalism the economic model we want for our future? If so, do we understand what its impacts are and are we willing to live with those impacts? You are soon to be adults and have a responsibility in how we keep this society functioning. So our role is to understand what's come before us. So we have the tools to be prepared how to pivot and shift and move and adapt and create as we move forward. As you'll hear me say a lot, my favorite Jimmy Baldwin quote, not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it is faced. We face history and ourselves. We understand where we've come from so we can adapt and adopt new ways of thinking moving forward. So your weekend homework, what does it mean to be an American and who gets to decide? What influences does any of the characteristics of the master narrative have on answering our guiding essential question? After you finished your writing prompt and this lecture in your notes, you get to do some perusal or some deep dive into your favorite social media space, TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, and find a screenshot, find and screenshot one example of someone or something 
that you believe is promoting an obvious overt anybody you you could see it from a, a mile away an obvious example of the american master narrative for extra credit you can find a second and post a second less obvious example. With each of your posts, if you do too, you'll post the photo in the media album, which I'll show you in a second, and explain your reasoning. So you have on Schoology here, if we go back to our folder, you have this slideshow. I'll add the video that I'm recording right now. You have the worksheet. You will add from your phone, this is the easiest to do, add an image here and you'll offer a one to two sentence caption that explains how you think your artifact is an example of the American master narrative. I'd also love to challenge any of you for extra credit if there is, this is a slideshow that Miss Dowdy and I have worked on for a while. If there is a characteristic, um, going back to our main our pillars of the American master narrative. If there's a category that I have left out and forgotten, I would love for you to challenge us there to add some new element to the American master narrative. Yes. Column. And maybe with your artifact, you can help us to expand this slideshow. Thank you all for sticking with me. I know this is a long video. I hope this was a meaningful way for you to consider and peel back the curtain, characteristics of our society, where we've come from and where we're going. I'll see you when I see you.